Well, good evening, everyone, again. Uh, we're, uh, budget season is in full force, and welcome to draft four of the budget. Tonight, we will take a deeper dive into the scope of our operation and how staffing will play a critical role in budgeting this process. Next slide, Mr. Stangle. So this is a loaded slide this evening, and, and I just thought it would be um, good for the board's edification and, and the community to understand sort of the scope of our operation and, and, and the many moving parts that, that go along with operating the school district every day. So aside from Pittsburgh Public Schools, we're the second largest school district in Allegheny County with our um, estimated $109.1 million budget for next year. Um, what goes along with that budget um, is us following the Governmental Accounting Standards Board, generally accepted accounting principles, board policy, school code, IRS, Department of Revenue, and federal uniform grant guidance. So when you see me present in certain forms and fashions and, and the way we allocate things and report them, a lot of that is driven by those standards that I just mentioned. Um, obviously, we know next year we're projecting uh, 5,431 students. Um, that's a lot of kids. Uh, we like to joke we have the biggest high school in Allegheny County because uh, North Allegheny has two. Um, but a again, a, a lot of students, um, every year the, the business office issues over 1,000 W-2s. We, we process about 750 people get paid every two weeks. So um, it's, it's, it's a lot of people and a lot goes into that every two weeks. We're always very th thankful when uh, payroll has, has finished for that time. Um, we also have a very large footprint. Uh, we have 10 schools, uh, 473 classrooms throughout those 10 buildings. And uh, Mr. Marciniak and his team clean over 1 million square feet every night. Um, it's a giant, giant operation. We have five major athletic fields and 53.2 acres over our 10 schools. So a lot of buildings and grounds work. Um, uh, our guys work very hard. And, you know, a, a lot be beyond the educational piece that, that happens to make our schools go the way they are. Uh, we have 15 different curricular areas, uh, 38 sports between uh, high school and middle school. There's over 123 coaches that participate in those 38 sports. Uh, we have 35 budget managers. Uh, they include anyone from central office administrators to principals, department heads, curriculum council, adult ed. Um, on my budget presentation last Wednesday, I had the full list of all 35 of those. Um, so I implore you to take a look at that. Um, we have 32 activity clubs here at the high school. Um, typically, there's anywhere from $200,000 to $300,000 in that fund uh, by the month from our students' fundraising activities. Again, that's a whole different set of books and, and management by some personnel at the high school and in my office. Um, federal programs, uh, which uh, Dr. Mary Beth Irvin uh, leads with myself uh, with the f fiscal compliance, and Dr. Nikki Gill actually is, is another whole piece to our reporting. Uh, we're actually going through our single audit this week where they're testing our federal programs. Um, our summer programs, our extended school year, and um, some of the summer workshops we do. Um, our adult ed programs, which run all year long, driver's ed being our biggest piece. We have a simulator, and we have a car here to, to, to teach driver's ed and test our, uh, test our folks. Um, we have nine different departments. Uh, we meet every Monday morning, elementary and secondary education, special education, facilities, finance, human resources, technology, food service, and transportation. Uh, finally, our food service fund, which is a separate fund that we never see during this budget process, is a, is a break-even fund that does about $2.5 million a year in revenue. And uh, most of the, f the food is prepared here at the high school and, and put in boxes and taken by box truck uh, to our buildings without kitchens. So we satellite the majority of the food is prepared here and then satellite it out. And those are another 67 employees that work in that group um, that uh, report to Mr. Fetchko, food service director. So just wanted everybody to kind of get an idea of the scope of the operation and, and um, you know, why this budgeting process is, is a lot of refining and a lot of meetings and a lot of talking to try to get to our end goal. Next slide, Mr. Stengel. So um, staffing, again, is the major piece here. Um, I said this last Wednesday evening, I'll say it again tonight, 80% of our budget is salaries and benefits. Another 10% is debt. So before we even turn a light on, about 90% of our budget is filled out. That's why the uh, emphasis on our staffing meetings and, and um, knowing our student enrollments and counts and classrooms and, and everything is so very important and crucial to the budgeting process. Uh, the district has a long history of reducing staff whenever possible. Um, I'm going to re, uh, represent on the next slide kind of the staffing uh, without our PCA group in there. A lot of those are driven by IEP, and a lot of those um, 
uh, change year in and year out. So um, we'll, we'll focus on that on the next slide. The other thing uh, when we talk about staffing is um, you cannot reduce staff for any economic reasons. So um, decreased enrollment, which we, don't, we do not have. We've had consistent enrollment of about 5,400 kids for the last 20 years. Um, the only way to do that is to make pro pro programmatic changes. And should that happen, uh, school code um, forces us to reduce administrators at the same level. So our, our talk about staffing and working around retirements and, and whatnot is, is so critical to our, our budgeting process. So uh, we have an additional teacher retirement um, last week. So we're up to 12 teacher retirements. And our high school unit principal is retiring in September. So uh, currently, we're searching for two, two principals to, to fill those roles. And that there's obviously a process to that. Um, and uh, could be savings, could not. So we'll, we'll watch those very closely as we can continue to do this budget process. Next slide, Mr. Stengel. So this is the same ch staffing chart I showed last week, uh, Monday and Wednesday. But at this, we, uh, we backed out the PCA number there. So this, this slide depicts the staffing without the personal care assistance. Their numbers fluctuate, like I said, uh, by special ed enrollment, and most of the time are driven by IEP. So out of the seven controllable categories that we have there, uh, we've reduced 21 staff since 2009-2010. So that's a 3.2% decrease on, on, our, on our staffing while our enrollment has stayed level. So a, a, a very important commitment to fiscal stability, and you know, I've, I've kind of drove that point home the last two years that, that staffing is a big piece of that. Um, so uh, yeah, that's it. A, again, I mean, the, the staffing's down and, and our enrollment has not changed. Um, so that, that turns into uh, fiscal stability. Next slide, Mr. Stengel. So as, as we continue to go through the budgeting process, um, these are all the uh, issues um, that are impacting the budget. Uh, staffing being number one, um, a, a look at our programming and meetings with department heads and department chairs. Um, PEASERS obviously continues to rise. Our health care, which we uh, alluded to last week, uh, we're currently negotiating with our support staff. Uh, we're cur currently negotiating retirements, um, additional special ed costs. Um, and then uh, between the Act 1 index, state funding, federal funding, we're looking for our assessed value disc, which will come May 1st. Um, and then the board will talk about um, the, a mix of all those together with the use of fund balance. Uh, additionally, um, transportation costs uh, with, with fuel and some additional runs and our charter school tuition. Are, we're, we're beginning to trend those and try to predict those for next school year. Next slide, please. So we took a couple actions over the, la the last week. Um, so uh, I'll start on the expenditure side. We refined our salaries and benefits uh, down a little bit from last week. We've reduced our overtime. We've reduced uh, a little bit of outside travel uh, that we've t taken a, a five-year look at. And we've reduced some tuition reimbursement based on folks that are currently enrolled in school. So the salary uh, calculations have an impact on our Social Security and our PEASERS reimbursement because those are based on salary. Um, so we updated that portion. Uh, we increased our um, earned income tax by about $300,000 based on projections and uh, just favorable collections we're seeing this year. Uh, realty transfer tax, we've turned down just a little bit. The housing market has slowed, and now interest rates are beginning to climb. And then our delinquent tax, um, we've turned over about $865,000 to our delinquent collector. Uh, that number is usually about $1.1 million. So we turned that down, which means people paid their real estate taxes on time this year. So that number will come out favorably when the year closes out. Next slide, Mr. Stengel. So that all leads to this. Uh, the first blush last week showed us out of balance 4.9 million um, through the aforementioned adjustments there. Uh, we closed the gap by about a half a million dollars this, this, uh, this week. Um, let's still remember all those issues that are impacting this, including uh, staffing. And we have a lot of fine tuning to do over the next four weeks. Um, but this, this projection does not include the, governor, the governor's proposed budget, nor does it include any kind of tax increase. So uh, $4 million in March is usually our wheelhouse. We're usually between uh, 2 and a half to $4 million um, out when we're at this part of the budget process. So it's nothing we haven't seen in the past here. So we'll continue to, to work on those figures and uh, work through our staffing to try to close that gap. Next slide, Mr. Stengel. 
So just wanted to show the board here um, that those same figures, and this model just shows what the uh, budget would look like, again, without the governor's budget, where, you know, we're hearing from Harrisburg that that, that will not pass. Um, however, we're, we're very hopeful for that and the fair funding formula to come our way. Um, so with a tax increase to the index, um, a tax increase of 0.87 mills, that would close that gap to $2.6 million, or a millage equivalent of 0.94. So a lot of work to be done. Um, uh, Rob, yes. we are not recommending that the board increase to the index. That's just an example that's Rob showing you. Correct. Uh, that's in, in parentheses here. That's not our recommendation um, currently, um, but that is a, what uh, you can see a, a real estate tax increase would do for our um, out-of-balance figure. So next slide, Mr. Stengel. So we have some continued steps. Uh, again, um, you know, we will continue to work through this process. Um, here, here are some things to consider along the way. Um, our out of balance figure at 4.4 million uh, to consider a tax increase um, around 3%. The average is 2%. Uh, consider of use of fund balance to make up for revenue shortfalls. Uh, historically, pre pandemic, the board has allocated 750,000 in fund balance to balance the budget to produce taxpayer relief. Um, next month, we'll consider some charges for services. We obviously rent a lot of our spaces here at the building, um, whether it's through Aqua Club or Extended Day or use of our fields. And um, the folks that clean those and maintain those areas are obviously in, in a union contract, and those uh, rates increase. So um, we would recommend an increase for that next year um, to, to go along to pay for their services. Uh, we'll continue to analyze staffing. Uh, Dr. Irvin, Dr. Davis have staffing meetings over the next two weeks. Will they meet with their teams, uh, focus on enrollment, focus on student need, teacher need, uh, to see how we would do that. Obviously, a review of programs is always something that's kind of ongoing here. We'll continue to re refine expenditures kind of line by line as we go through. Uh, once we close March, again, we're another month closer to fiscal year end, and we'll be able to more adequately predict how certain revenue sources are coming in. So we'll close March out and get a more accurate pro um, projection of those year end. So that's it for tonight, a, a, a small update. Things are getting better. Um, uh, budget meetings are in full swing. Uh, Dr. Steinauer and I have spent a lot of time together over the last week or so uh, meeting with certain departments and, and running through some of this stuff. So um, we'll take any questions now. And, and um, if not, we can always reach out to me by email. I have a couple of questions. Sure. Um, first, um, you mentioned the uh, increase for uh, services, um, renting out of our buildings and things like that. Um, typically, what is that increase, Dr. Steiner? I know most years we do have a standard increase. I know that's been a little bit different for the past two years. Um, Three percent. Um, we, we get around 100000 in in mm -hmm. rental income, so $3,000 okay. would be the increase in services, depending on uh, whether the group is in-house, out-house, out of you know, district, right. it would depend on the space. Right. And then my other question um, sort of went along with your ending statement, which is, um, you know, hopefully by the time we come in April, and we since we do have to approve the preliminary budget in April, um, we'll have a better idea of the revenue source expenditures for this current year. Um, it seems like so far we've had an increase in revenue and a decrease in expenditures. So will that difference impact next year's budget significantly? Uh, so that, that, is, that is it. That is how, how we're going to get there, Ms. Albrecht, is an increase in revenue um, locally, hopefully from the state level. Uh, we're, we're planning on federal funds to come in level. Uh, there hasn't been anything else appropriated, but refining those expenditures is the key point to that. Thank you. Mm Mr. Glecko, obviously, um, as, as you're, you're building your budget, your plan for next year, you know, you're, you're working, as you indicated, with Dr. Steinhauer and, and each of the different departments to refine um, planned expenditures. You know, but once that plan is written, once the budget is authorized, you know, as we, we execute throughout the course of, 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 of the entire year, um, is there an effort, is there a plan, is there an initiative to continue to drive um, savings, expenditure reductions, um, et cetera? Always. It's an ongoing process, Mr. Weiland. Um, simply this, if every February we come back second semester and have a stop spending memo um, where if, if people have a need, um, it, it's scrutinized very heavily by a few people before that expenditure happens. Uh, we're always looking at, at our contracts. We, I know we approve our contracts over $100 in February. 
but but the, the savings in, in the um, the trying to save uh, never kind of stops in our office whether we're looking at printing costs or paper or turning lights off or whatever it may be the, the efforts are always there by all of our staff and you Last week uh, in your presentation, I, I believe it was, you, you, and I've been to a few budget meetings recently, so forgive me if I, I'm blending them together. Um, there was a, a discussion about, I mean, obviously, uh, the, the final numbers for last year were starting to get to a place where they're, 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 they're coming to a head. Um, and we had, of course, authorized the, the use of $1.5 million in fund balance to, to, to balance the budget. Um, last year, um, early returns. What 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 does that look like so, at the moment? Uh, right now, everything is trending appropriately. We use February as kind of our six month to cut off our, our true half to the year because our teachers get paid July and August on last year's salary. So everything is trending appropriately on the expenditure side. We've received some additional federal funds and have been over collecting in most of our local revenue categories. So things are favorable. Um, it, it, uh, Without being audited, I, I would say we're probably a million dollars to the good right now. Other questions from the board? Okay. Thank you, okay. Mr. Thank Blood. you, Rob. Our, our, uh, my budget forum from last Wednesday is recorded. It's on our budget website, so take a look. Thank you.